Yo, what's up? My name is Petrowski, and this is going to be a basic, sort of simple guide in explaining to you guys everything that I have learned so far. There's the roar from the from the new vanity mask. That's hilarious. Um, everything that I have learned so far having to do with this year's 2022 Lunar New Year event. So I'm going to go ahead and jump in queue right now. Uh, you talk to this lady. She should be in any major city or in certain cities all across the, uh, you know, the world. And there's a lot of important things that just got announced. So Let's go ahead and cover the basics. You know, scores for this mission will be tracked, blah, blah, blah. You, have a, you have a total score you want to keep track of. Your hotkey is temporarily adjusted. You're able to use your hotkey with the Pokemon you select. Uh, you can use things like Healing Wind or Mending. It's something like Mending Touch, which is like a healing move for your Pokemon, and then Healing Wind heals statuses. And then the most important one, this event uses a shared inventory. So it's really, really important. Whenever you use any sort of item or whenever you want to consume or give items to your Pokemon, please, 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 one of my biggest common courtesies and biggest suggestions is to communicate with your team, especially if you're doing this with random players. I'm doing this with a duo partner, a friend, to go ahead and, um, you know, Joshua, to go ahead and, like, give you guys this guide and all this information. But... Uh, yeah, please, please, please communicate with your team and let them know, like, hey, like, can I use Expert Belt and put it on my Electrovire, etc., etc., especially with things like the Strength Charm and Evo Charm, that's going to be huge. So, I'm going to be going ahead and selecting Electrovire and Espeon as my two Pokemon. Those are the two Pokemon that I really like uh, and I really enjoy for this, for this run. Uh, Joshua goes Luxray and Per Ugly, and she's going to go ahead and pick up all the items. So, all of the items are once again shared, so even though it says Josh... Uh, obtain them we really share them so these two items are two of the most important items in the event so evolution charm is going to evolve any pokemon that you have you can collect pokemon throughout the event i'll get into more detail with that soon but it's going to allow you to evolve any of your pokemon into the final stage so if you use an evolution charm on a cinequil it will immediately make it a typhlosion which is really really important strength charm is going to spread out evs It'll give everything 85 across. It will not let you choose the EVs, which is super unfortunate. If it lets you choose the EVs, this item would be a lot better. Um, but it's spreading out all of the EVs being 85 across is fine. But it's not it's not as good as Evolution Charm. I really think the Evolution Charm is the best item in this event, uh, in my opinion. That's why it cost 6 coins in the shop. So here, we're going to go over to start the event. For those who don't know, the event is sort of a wave-based. It says waves cleared up here. A wave-based sort of survival format minigame. Very similar to the Christmas event, um, except this one's much easier in my opinion, and I really, really like that personally. I really, really prefer the chill sort of casual, excuse me, casual sort of uh, gameplay a long time. You can make a lot more mistakes in this game, in this game mode, in the Lunar Year event compared to the Christmas one. So let's go ahead and get into it. I'm not quite sure, I'm going to be totally honest, I'm not quite sure which of these is the best starting one right now, but I can go ahead and give you guys like some of the Pokemon that I've seen from these. I know that um, Monkey is quite good because you get access to Chimchar uh, pretty early, and Chimchar seems to be quite strong. Um, Pig is not great in my opinion because you have access to like Spoink and uh, what else? Tepig I guess, which aren't great Pokemon, I don't know if I've seen Tepig. I know Spoink, not a huge fan. Uh, what are some other Pokemon that are pretty worth mentioning? I know um, Dragon's a huge one. Dragon gives you access to Trico, Charmander, and Gibble, um, and Bagon. I actually think Gibble is surprisingly one of the worst Pokemon in this because he gets a really, really bad move pull. Gibble's move pull ends up being like Iron Tail, Dragon Rush, which are both 75% accuracy moves, so that's the big kicker. Like He has two 75% accuracy moves, and then Home Claws, which is a move that lets him raise his attack and his accuracy by one, but you don't want to be wasting a turn setting up your accuracy in an, in an event like this. It's just it's too slow. Uh, you want to be able to consistently one-shot everything. Josh over here dancing beautifully, showing off her skills. Uh, but then Treat, like Sceptile is probably nice. It has access to the pledges. It could be nice to go ahead and set up some pledge kind of uh, strategy. Pledges are moves like the Fire Pledge, Grass Pledge, and Water Pledge, which all kind of combine with each other uh, and work off of each other, increase each other's power in a certain way in battle. I'm going to be starting off of Monkey here just to gain access to Chimchar. Josh is ready. Awesome. So now I'm going to be looking here at those Chimchar, looking here at the Politoed Shop. So the Politoed Shop is going to give you a random assortment of items every single time. So here we have like this run, we have access to Magnet, Nevermelt Ice, Charcoal, Air Balloon, Black Sludge, and Choice Specs. Choice Specs is actually really insane. I have never seen that in the shop, which is pretty sick. Um, it looks like they also, Air Balloons are expensive. It looks like they may have upped some of the prices on some of these. 
since I've last played, which is interesting. Choice packs being 16 lucky gold coins is crazy expensive, uh, but I'm mean, fair enough. So these sell for very cheap. Don't ever sell those. They're so good. I really recommend buying the evolution charms. They're very, very powerful. Choice packs is crazy though. I would love, yeah, it's a crazy item. But anyways, um, these, I believe his shop will actually refresh every time you defeat the boss, I believe is when it does that. So you can buy items from this and sell items using a currency called lucky gold charms, which we don't have any of yet. I believe you get four of them every time you defeat a boss. So me and Josh, are going to go ahead and head over to Chimchar. I believe we're going to jump into this battle. Uh, and this event is going to be all based around like using the correct typing moves at the correct time and sort of understanding when to use. It's a lot of like on your feet thinking. So right now, uh, another huge part of this event is asking your teammate, asking your team like what moves that they have. So me and Josh have played this event a lot of times together. I know that they have wild charge. I believe it's wild charge, double kick, uh, and something else, crunch. I think it's wild charge, Double kick, crunch, and then provoke. Double kick, apom? Question mark. So you want to communicate with your teammates like this. This is going to be a uh, a great way to get through. Let's see what they did. Okay, perfect. Perfect. Let them know. So now I'm able to T punch Chimchar. It's only going to do neutral damage, but it is going to have stab. So. This game mode really is just so much... Oh, they crit as well. This game mode is just so much of understanding Pokemon information and, like, damage and stab and what move to use when and typings and everything. It's basically just a, a game of rock, paper, scissors, honestly. Uh, but you want to start here. You want to clear as many waves as possible. And then I'm going to go ahead and show you guys. We're going to make our way up. Actually, going to tell them to crunch Metatite. And I'm going to go for a T-Punch on Slack off, and that should finish. They have access to Crunch, and that has a lot more PP. I guess we could have double kicked. Oh, it doesn't kill. That's unfortunate. So sometimes... Oh, wow. We actually don't kill both of them. I'm actually really surprised I didn't kill either of them. Um, I guess that's a mistake on my end. So you're always going to make mistakes. It's always going to happen, as I just did. I literally just made a mistake. I probably should have just... Uh, we probably should have just gone for the double kick on Slack off. But now we can just try to finish these guys off. Not a huge deal. We lost a little bit of HP because of our small mistake, but not the worst thing in the world. Finish the guys off. So it's all about uh, collecting Pokemon. So as you can see, every time we defeat a Pokemon, it says can now be claimed at the shrine. So I'm going to be now showing you guys how to get to the shrine. You're going to want to head west. You do have to battle like a certain amount of Pokemon. Let's head to the shrine. You're going to have to battle a certain amount of Pokemon that is kind of, you have to. You can dodge Pokemon when possible, but you have to at least battle the minimum amount. What is Mankey? Fighting, just fighting type. Metatite, I believe, is Metatite psychic fighting or what's the, I think that's what I miscalculated. I think I thought Metatite was just a psychic type, but I think it's psychic fighting. Yep. Okay. Uh, I assume wild charge Mankey. I think I have to T-Punch the uh, Metatite. I think they already, yeah, they already, they already slipped the move. I think they went for the Crunch on Metatite. I know that Crunch isn't going to be able to, to kill Metatite. That's okay. We can get the Crunch off on Mankey. Not very effective. That's totally fine. So I have to do that there because we know that, um, make sure you wait for your for your teammates to move. Uh, it's really just important. I actually should have Fire Punch there to save some PP. Um, it's very, very important to just communicate with your team before you click any move. It's very, 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 very crucial. Very, very, very important. Uh, so Mankey cannot be claimed. Let's go ahead and keep heading north. We want to dodge these encounters. Uh, we could have dodged this Mankey encounter, but we ended up running into an accident, and that's okay. That sometimes happens. It's, you know, it's not a big deal. Um, we should be good to just Wild Charge. Uh, and just one, we should be able to one shot each of these dudes pretty easily. You do want to save your PP when possible. So, for example, last turn, I actually should have fire punched the Mankey instead of going for the T punch because I didn't need the extra damage with T punch. Um, and I would have been able to save one more PP on Thunder Punch, which is my most powerful move. So, this really comes down to saving resources, playing it smart, playing it slowish. Uh, and just really like getting maximum efficiency out of out of what you have very long term So we're gonna head up here. We're heading towards the shrine. We're very very close to it The shrine is right up here A little more north than we are now and the shrine is super 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 important Wild charge do -do -do. Um, The shrine is super important. That's where we can claim Pokemon So you see how we currently have two fully evolved and fully EV Pokemon to start 
the event with. If we head up to the shrine, we can actually get one more Pokemon. You can have up to three Pokemon in your party during the event. That is super, super important information. So we're going to try to dodge this Pidgey encounter. Dodge it pretty easily, pretty successfully. So we can go up here, and this girl is going to tell you your total score, which is also pretty nice. Um, it's not super relevant right now, or at least during. But here, we can go select whatever Pokemon we want, which is super, super huge. Um, you want to learn, and you want to understand what Pokemon have, what healing moves, etc., etc. I'm going to go ahead and grab um, Chimchar. Chimchar is super, super sick. I'm a huge fan of Chimchar. Uh, it's very powerful for the boss as well. Um, I need... We need, we need something with a healing thing is going to be the biggest. We need a healer. So, certain Pokemon, um, it was Apom or something else. I forgot what the Pokemon was. Um, okay, we'll see. Should be good. Meditate. Or a palm might. We need. We want to support Pokemon here because the boss is Dark type that we're aware of at the moment, uh, and that's a super important factor. We're gonna be getting to the boss semi soon, or at least as soon as I possibly can. Um, the boss is Dark type, so gonna be super weak to fighting, which is super important. Okay, that's fine. Doesn't have to, so now we. Do, so now we're just in a position where. Okay, so now we are in a position where. We just need to clear waves ASAP. So we're just gonna clear waves as fast as possible, and I'm just gonna try to tell you guys as much information as possible while we're clearing the waves, those waves. So a few powerful Pokemon that I've found. Uh, Chimchar feels really good. Uh, I really like Electrovire. Electrovire seems pretty decent. Um, Salamence seems quite good. Some of the weaker Pokemon that I found will end up being uh, Eevee. Eevee feels abysmal. Eevee might be the weakest Pokemon that I've that I've seen in this game mode, which is really sad. Eevee is also an absolute nightmare to go against, unfortunately, in the wild. Um, because, so what's going to happen is, Eevee has, I believe, Toxic, Healing Wind, and then I think Return. I'm not quite sure. My, I don't think it has Return. I think it's like Healing, Toxic. It's like Healing Wind, Toxic, uh, and then maybe like wish or the mending thing it's a full-on support pokemon uh and toxic in this game mode is going to be really 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 bad toxic is like way too slow uh in this game mode where you're wanting to just blast through every pokemon in one shot your real goal through this event is just being able being able to efficiently blast through everything that's what it comes down to getting the typing matchups being able to kick everything's butt uh is super super important go for wild charge on deli bird i so i actually know that i have slightly more attack than luxray electrovire has i believe 123 base attack there we go so we're able to take out the torch check electrovire has 123 base attack while luxray has uh 120 i believe it's very very close it's, it's very very close but i'm not quite sure if luxray would be able to take out the torch check there um so i might as well go ahead and um clear that out guaranteed so now we're moving into the dog dog phase it looks like we're gonna unlock riolu riolu is super huge and we're not you're not super in this game mode you're not super worried about losing like your baby pokemon like losing these is is not a not a horrible thing but losing access to electrovire or espion is pretty rough right now uh, and obviously we want to be able to take keep hang on to them uh, as long as possible the question is what what moves we click here? I know Riolu is what fighting steel, electric. This is actually a tough play. Um, no no no, leave Riolu to me. I think I need to fire punch Riolu, and um, crunch electric. I think crunch electric is the play. I should be able to fire punch Riolu. I think it'll take him out. There we go. It wasn't super effective. Crunch. There it goes. Crunch. So there we go. Perfect. Okay, so we, thankfully we were able to take them out, even though uh, we didn't quite have the coverage, which will thankfully happen sometimes. Uh, we can go on this Hound Hour encounter. So now we're just blindly clearing waves. What is really important is that after all of the waves are clear, you do want to go ahead and um, look for bags. So there's going to be like these like money bag type things. Double kick Hound Hour. So... 
there's all there's always gonna be these like money bag type things all across the um I'm actually gonna ice punch here. Ice Punch has a chance to freeze, which is slightly better than the chance to burn, since Electric is probably a special attacker there. Um, anyways, there's going to be these money bags all across the map as soon as you kind of defeat enough waves to be able to, to attack the boss. So you have to clear six waves, I believe, until you're able to defeat the boss, which is kind of a lot. Uh, so we have a lot to do here. I think I'm going to go ahead and just cut recording here. And then if I have anything else to say, I'll go ahead and get back to you guys. I don't want to be wasting your guys' time. So hopefully I've given you enough valuable information so far. And I will see you guys again when I have anything important to say. Okay, I actually want to show you guys a strategy. So right now, I'm actually going to go ahead and use a Strength Charm on my Chimchar, which is going to give it EVs, which is strange, right? Because I'm giving it EVs before evolving it. So whenever you evolve a Pokemon, it'll actually restore all of its PP and HP. So it's sort of like a mini heal. So I'm actually going to give my Chimchar EVs, going to go ahead and start using it. Uh, and then after using it a bit, after getting some value out of it, I'm going to also then Evo Charm it uh, to be able to heal it up after that so it's, it's a great way to get some extra value out of your pokemon out of your pp and out of your evo charm so i'm gonna go ahead and jump into another battle and then i might end up evo charming it right before the boss because being able to brick break the boss with uh with chimchar would be super super sick so i will see you guys with that all right here we are making our way down to this bag right now see there's two bag spawns one down here oh that's really good we have pikachu light ball is actually one of the most powerful items uh, within this game mode if you have Pikachu of course so it's really really important um, if you have Pikachu you might want to keep him healthy um, in case you get a light ball or you might want to um, you know keep a light ball in case you have Pika in case you get Pikachu like don't maybe don't sell light ball immediately um, etc etc light ball can be such a budget super super powerful item so always looking for light ball is super super nice so we're gonna try to go around uh, and scoop up all the bags all of the items we possibly can dodge a couple encounters here if possible nice nice i'm gonna grab as many of these as possible so now we have expert belt light ball and miracle seed during this run not too shabby we're gonna go ahead and keep collecting the bags which are kind of located all around the map uh, and keep clearing waves until we get access to the boss all right, so we just got the boss to pop up. We actually just got an evolution charm. Super sick from a bag over here. I'm gonna go ahead and grab this last bag up top. And there's another bag up here. So this bag's actually a little funny. We're gonna go grab that. No worries, no worries, Josh. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and head left. Let's come get the last bag. So this bag's actually in a funny spot. And I actually wanna show you guys how to get it because it's kind of unintuitive, or at least it was really it was really unintuitive to me. Um, seeing that bag over there, I was like, how, like, how do we get that? You can actually just surf. On, on this water right here uh there's no dialogue or anything you just like press your a button uh, and come over here grab your bag easy peasy grab your three balloons so now we're going to head back to the boss and i'm going to be showing you guys how to do that so i want to make you i want to let you guys know immediately that never ever ever go into the boss never lead into the boss with a psychic type pokemon i have made this mistake personally twice never ever ever do it it's really really bad um he's dark type he's gonna crunch it. he's gonna destroy you i'm gonna go ahead and evo charm my chimchar which is gonna be sick so i now have infernape with expert belt being able to brick break my opponent it's super super nice uh, i don't know if we have access to a heal pokemon we, we, so this is yeah this is actually a good point brought up by josh so we're gonna go ahead back up to the shrine and actually look for a heal pokemon we could, we could release something so even though our parties are full we can look to go ahead and uh, heal. We can we can look to release one of them. So like for example, I don't really want to release any of my Pokemon, but Josh could easily release Metatite uh, and then try to grab a Mending Wound Pokemon. So we're gonna do that really quick. So Josh went ahead and released her Metatite, which is one of the funniest things about this event, or at least funny, but it's messed up. Uh, all the Pokemon that die or you release become ghosts <laughs> over in these marked off areas, uh, and that so. Whenever, I believe it's once you reach 12 dead Pokemon. So six can be stacked in this box, and then six can be stacked in this box. That's why I kind of wanted this cone is here to mark off this box. Uh, once there's six here, six here, I believe the event ends. So I believe you can have up to 12 Pokemon die, and then that's rest in peace, rip for your, rip for your run. So here we are. Josh is going to use Mending Prayer, which is the healing move. Uh, use two times on Espeon, please, and once on Elect. So... Josh is actually able to heal not only her own Pokemon, but my Pokemon as well with this move. It's super, super powerful. There we go. I actually probably could have just asked for it once on Espeon. Um, but yeah, that's it's it's really, really nice. There we go. So Espeon's now fully healed. Electrovire, I believe it does around 40%. Let's go ahead and see. So Electrovire is 161 HP. 
yeah, he got healed from 90 to, to full. So it might heal 50% per use. I'm not quite sure, but that was super sick. Now my full party is at full HP. We're super sick. Having a Pokemon like that with the with the Mending Prayer in the back, just not even doing battle, just kind of AFK uh, chilling as your sort of support healing Pokemon is super, super useful. So we're going to head over to the boss now, fully healed up, fully ready for, fully ready for this battle. Uh, and I'll show you guys how it looks and how it goes. Okay, here we are at the boss. We're going to go ahead and walk up to it, make sure we're both ready, and then we should be able to click it and engage in the fight. So the boss is, has a really, really annoying mechanic where it sort of slips into the shadows and takes control. So it envelops the field. He's going to go for the, the two minutes to go off. Okay, so my best bet, we know he's dark type. I'm just going to go for the brick break. I'm going to have stab expert belt brick break with infernape. It should be able to do a lot of damage. Let's go ahead and see. This is pretty much... Yeah, this is pretty much almost best case scenario. Uh, another great option for the boss is Eruption Typhlosion does a monstrous amount of damage, which is super important to keep in mind. Thankfully, uh, Superpower doesn't do much to either of us, which is really, really incredible. We're able to get a lot of damage off on him. That was a ton of damage. Wow, that was awesome. One of the most annoying things that this boss actually does... Um, so he could go for an extreme speed here, although he's probably going to... I probably should go for a Rick Break. I could have just uh, gone for a Quick Guard here. To maybe avoid a possible extreme speed. He's going to reappear. Dragon Ball. So he kind of slips in and out of the shadows. And there's not really much you can do about that. This might finish him off though. Uh, no, cannot quite. But you know, the, the double kick. Okay, it just like, it kind of glitched I guess. Which is really funny. The double kick. The second double kick hit him once he went back into the field. So that was actually an extremely easy boss fight. That was one of the easiest uh, phase one boss fights I've ever seen. Um, usually he will kind of crunch onto one of your pokemon and take them into the darkness with him and they will make it so that he actually like you actually can't use your pokemon if they're slipped into the darkness with him you're not able to use your pokemon and he sort of sort of consumes them temporarily for two turns i believe out of the fight and then your your teammate has to, your teammate is freely able to attack them thankfully because of that um he's still he's like kind of like in like a, a mid going attack it's kind of like a fire spin or like a wrap sort of attack that controls low one Pokemon, so it can't attack him, but he's also locked into combat with that Pokemon, so... That pretty much covers the boss fight. That pretty much covers everything I wanted to with this event. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video and enjoyed this basic guide, and I really hope it was helpful to you. If it was, let me know by hitting that like button and subscribing for future Pokemon content and tons of Lunar New Year event content. Uh, also, consider checking out all the playlist links below. I do have a Lunar New Year event playlist set up, which is sick for the event. Uh, and also, consider, consider joining the Discord, which is a great community and incredible people. You can also find people to play the event with. If you don't have anyone to play the event with, joining my, joining my Discord is a great way to do that. We have always have a looking for group uh, chat set up during events like this. And then finally, if you found this video to be helpful enough to warrant the support, becoming a YouTube member to me for five bucks a month is a fantastic way to go above and beyond and show me that support. So thank you all so much for watching. I hope I was helpful to you today in your Pokemon journeys, and I wish you the best of luck in your Pokemon journeys, and I'll see you guys later.